and he's the mindset is just like the mindset is just strange to me. Yeah, that's a good thing. Like I yeah. look into the, if I was, look into the man at two when y'all get a chance. There's something called the man that look into that. Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson, yeah. Yeah, yep, yep, exactly. But the, the man act is 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 um I, they 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 didn't mention that though. They didn't say that he's it's he's, in the paperwork okay. though. It's mentioned in the paperwork. Mm. The man the act, act is mentioned. The man act say that is again. mentioned. The man act is mentioned in um Diddy's paperwork. Yeah, to, to to some extent. Can you show me where that is, man? So Remember, I actually I got it off. I got it off of the the uh, New York government website. Let me see if I can grab the link again. Yeah, because the, I didn't. I haven't heard that yet. I mean, I, it don't, it don't mean it hasn't. But well, he's talking about the across state lines and all yeah. that other stuff. Yeah, awesome. yeah I, I heard the them. ivory towers of the yeah, universe. Yeah, this is this is this is the man. Americans faced a rising chorus of voices that also threatened to reshape traditional values. 8.8 million immigrants crowded into American cities in the first decade of the 20th century alone. Things never change, man. <laughs> the more things change, the more they stay the same. Well, there's, there's one denominator that changed. No, these fuckers were criminals too. These are the Italians, the mobsters and shit, the, the mafia. These motherfuckers were criminals too. Pepperoni 8.8 8 million immigrants crowded into American cities in the first decade of the 20th century alone. There was a lot of tension in the air, but the flashpoint uh, turned on sexuality and particularly prostitution. Mainstream Protestant America thought it was a phenomenon that was caused by those wicked foreigners in those cesspools of cities into which our young girls are now going. It's true. In 1907, the crusading McClure's Magazine published a story about an association of Russian Jews purportedly supplying Chicago brothels with new uh -oh. personnel. Russian Jews. Oh, no. Oh, boy, they. Yeah, Jews were criminals back then, like very like Meyer Lansky, one of the biggest um gangsters ever, man. Meyer Lansky a Jew. Um they say um Rothstein, um Henry Ross, what's, what's his name? What was it Rothstein's yeah. first name? Um but yeah, these yeah, are yeah. a lot of big gangsters back in the day, man. Jews Jews had ghettos, they had the original ghettos. Jews had the original ghettos in America. The word ghetto comes from what Jew it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's what the Jews call their um, area, the slums. These into which our young girls are now going. In 1907, the crusading McClure's Magazine published a story about an association of Russian Jews purportedly supplying Chicago brothels with new personnel. When a city prosecutor claimed that those prostitutes were, in effect, white slaves, a wave of hysteria gripped the country. There was all sorts of lurid stories. Women were, were being hit by poison darts on the trolleys. They were being lured away from imagined ice cream parlors. It created a tremendous hullabaloo because people believed this. Although scant evidence supported the existence of white slavery, Congress passed the White Slave Traffic Act on June 25, 1910. This law, also known as the Mann Act, forbade any person from transporting women or girls across state lines for the purpose of prostitution, debauch. And then that's what Jack Jack Johnson got caught up in. A lot of people, you know, black people think that the Man Act was created because of him. No, he just got caught up in that shit. You know the famous yeah. boxer? Y'all familiar with him? Yeah. yeah they, I'm not. Yeah, they... they I'll, you always hear some people say, man, they... They made the they made the man act because they they saw Jack Johnson with white women and you know they had to put a stop to that. He was he was rich and black and and and, yeah. and famous and he had white women, so they had to create an entire law to put him in jail. 
Yeah, he, I mean, he just broke the law. He he broke that law. <laughs> like I mean, and listen, is it a is it a bad law? I I don't know, but whatever. But it's like yo, like yeah, it needs to be revised. No. Forbade any person from transporting women or girls across no, state no. lines for the purpose of prostitution, debauchery, or any other immoral purpose. Basically, human travel. One of the interesting things uh, of the Man Act is uh, it uh, didn't got to the dark on actual sex happening. Nah, I ain't messing around with the dark web. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, that's how I got it. The dark. Yeah, I'm, I hopped in the dark web up. one day. There's some wild shit on that joint, bro. How do you, yeah, how dark do you get the dark web? Like, what, is it, what does that mean, the dark web? It's, it's a specific browser and certain prompts and, you know, okay. uh, shit you got to use. You had to school use. me to that. You had to school uh, me to that because I, I, don't, I don't, I didn't even know, I had, I had no idea about no dark web. Then you have the intranet. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know nothing about that. Is uh, it didn't depend upon actual sex happening. It was very almost Orwellian in the way it was construed by courts. Vital elements of the crime were transportation across the state line. The Man Act soon became a tool for more personal vendettas. Fathers turned in the boyfriends of wanton daughters. Wives reported philandering husbands. And some prosecutors exploited the law as a weapon against romances that crossed the color line. Jack Johnson was an easy target for the Man Act. In 1908, he became the first black man to break through boxing's color barrier and reigned as heavyweight champion of the world. Perhaps he was the Muhammad Ali of his day. He was very flamboyant. Uh, he was pretty much in your face kind of person. A black man. Like son, how, man. Could he be, how could he be like that with all the racism back then, man? When they lynched him, man. Well, he yeah. was good at sports, so they let him get away with it, I guess. That that's what they would say, probably. Yeah, you could you could defile all the white women you want as long as you can knock niggas up. Yeah. You I'm see the sun in the crowd, day. right? He was very. I don't know. I can't tell, man. I can't tell who's in that crowd. In the crowd front row? Me. His day. He was very flamboyant. Uh, he was pretty much in your face kind of person. A black man being champion of the world didn't fit into a lot of people's idea about who that should be. Johnson further inflamed his critics by openly keeping company with white women and eventually marrying two of them. Hey, oh, two of them. <laughs> so yeah, it, was, <laughs> it was so bad. These white people I wanted them out to paint so, so much that this nigga was marrying multiple white women. Yeah, man, and, and it wasn't it wasn't uncommon then too. Like, if you look at like if you pick a name from back in those days, pick some famous black person from back in those days. From back then, uh, damn, nineteen ten. Uh, I, I, Owens. Think, I was gonna say W. Yeah, e. Du Bois, but but he probably was marrying white men, not white women. W. E. B. Du Bois, Jesse Owens. Uh, I want. I don't know. I want to see who they was married to, man. Um, now, WD, w E D Du Bois, he probably was married to a to a white man. That nigga was a Melungeon, uh, Melungeon bussy popper. Let me see, W E D. Hobo Melungeon. W E B Du Bois, he was he was a mulatto though, but um, yeah, he was a Melungeon. He probably was getting baby weighed up by a white man, so I don't think that counts. Let me see, he married um, his, his let's see his wife. His wife, yeah, she 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 a fair skin. She doesn't melungeon too. He married a melungeon. Let me um, who's the other one you said? Jesse Owens. 
Jesse Owens. Yeah, but I think I saw that movie movie. about him, and I think it was. I think it was a white girl in it. Uh, I I can't remember. I don't know about. I don't know about some people from that from back then. To be honest, she a lot of them was married to white women, man. But um, a lot of shit. It wasn't nothing to be married to a white woman back in the day. You crazy? Um, now Jesse Owens, I think he was. He was. He looked like he was married to a um a sister. Uh, um, uh, uh, uh Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey. Nah, he, he. That's what I was saying. Like you got to dig into the Reconstruction era, man. You find some amazing things about what was happening back then. Good call, Philly. <laughs> Not for real. Listen, I'm being dead serious. Years, my man be years, so vague with it. He be like, he be like, man, look into this, man. You will find you, when you say looking at that, you mean like the the real history, the real true history of, of the yeah, the real true history, yeah. The crazy things they well, tried just to what do. What's going on to, in general? To accommodate the sun, man. Yeah. If we look, if we look back, are we going to see that? That that Abraham Lincoln was was black. No, you, you're going to see that he was considered a Melungeon. He wasn't black. black. Melungeons have three different ethnic ethnic ethnicities mixed into them. It's usually it's Native American, ethnic profile, Asian, and black. What was for any of the. Were any of the presidents back then uh, uh, African booty scratchers? Yeah, you had some in the 1800s. Well, which one? Hang on. Wait. Let me pull up my piece, my yeah, research. Yeah, look into it. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, me, let me move along. A lot of people's idea about who that should be. Johnson further inflamed his critics by openly keeping company with white women and eventually marrying two of them. Sex and race have always been linked in American culture and American society ever since the days of slavery. Black males were looked at as inherently predatory. You know, white men essentially projected all of their own anxieties onto black men and looked at them as sexual beasts. In the fall of 1912, federal authorities arrested and convicted Johnson for transporting one of his lady friends from Pittsburgh to Chicago. Few doubted that race was the real motivation. The federal prosecutor immediately after the conviction expressed before the press the hope that this would be an example about the evils of permitting Negroes and whites to marry. It had nothing to do with the crime at all. It was an amazingly candid expression of why he'd been targeted. Jack Johnson ultimately served one year in prison as punishment for his so-called crime. For the next two decades, man two decades, Man Act convictions continued to rise. But the manner in which men and women lived and loved in America was already changing. Let me tell you something. They be uh, salute the rabbit hole.